we'll need to use code pipeline service. Uh, mine is visible from recently visited. In your case, you may need to search for this. So let's just hit code pipeline. And I currently have no pipelines that are active. So let's create a new one. So let's hit create pipeline. And we can call this anything. I'm just going to call it React Deployment. And most AWS service needs some type of roller permission to run. In this case, this will be this will create one for us automatically. However, if you have an existing role, you can select it. We're going to leave as default and leave the name as is as well. So in next. For the source provider, we want to go with GitHub version 2. And this will allow us to create a connection from code pipeline to GitHub. I currently have no active connection, so I'm going to create one from scratch. If you already have a connection, you may be able to select the repository from here. So let's hit connect to GitHub. If you're doing this for the first time, you may be prompt with the GitHub authentication page. And I've done this a couple of times, so this will take me directly to the connection. So I'm going to give this a name, and this again can be anything. I'm just going to call it web deploy site and connect to GitHub. We will need to install an application. Now, once this app is installed in GitHub, it will allow us to either select all repository or a specific repository. For this example, we're going to create a new app and we're going to select the specific repository. So let it select install a new app. And I'm just going to go to my repository. And I've done this a couple of times, so I may need to remove the active one. Again, here I could select all repository or I select the specific one. In this case, I'll go with my specific repository and it's save. Once this is done, we should be able to just hit connect. And if this is successful, you will see your drop down list of your repository. If you selected all repository, you'll see the list of all the repos that you have. And we're going to point this to the main branch. If you're creating a more advanced uh, pipeline, you may want to make this more of a custom. For this example, we just want to run this pipeline when we push to the main branch. And in order to do this, we want to keep this checkbox active because this will give us a create a webhook that triggers every time we merge changes to the main branch. So it next with everything else left to default. And for a build provider, so we're going to use code build. In the previous, in the early examples, we run all the commands that are listed in the package at JSON, right? In the code build machine, we can write those commands to be executed. We're, we'll need to create this from scratch again. So let's hit create a project. And I'm going to call this. deployment for the operating system I'll go with Amazon Linux if you're familiar with Ubuntu and know the appropriate commands for that uh, you can select Ubuntu as well and for the runtime standard and the image I usually go with the latest one anyone should work to run now this is very important again this Cobalt machine needs a role as well and since we'll need to push the static files to S3 and create the CloudFront invalidation, we'll need to update this role later on to give it the necessary permission. We'll come back to this. Now those commands, we'll need to write them in what's called a build spec file. And the build spec file at YAML, this is... And the build spec file is where we'll put where we write our commands or instructions to run in the COBOL machine. This can be called any other name. .yml. I'm going to keep the name consistent and put build spec. We can either insert this using the editor or add the build spec file to our source repository, and that's all we do in this example. So let's add build spec right here, and that should be all we need to create our pipeline. So let's hit continue to code pipeline.
and let's hit next now we're going to skip the plot provider for the simple example if you're creating more of an advanced pipeline you may this is a great option to have a deploy provider where you can choose to use s3 or code deploy so let's hit skip deploy stage and we should see a list of all the commands or stages that our pipeline has so let's hit create pipeline Now, upon creating our pipeline, it will run automatically the first time and should fail since we haven't added the build spec file yet. And after a few minutes, this failed as predicted. So let's look at the error message. And again, it's looking for that build spec file. So we'll need to add this to our source uh, repository. So let's go over to our source code and clear. So let's go over to our source code. And we're going to add the build spec file in the same level as package.json. So let's just create a new file. We call this build spec.yml. Of course, if you call if you named your file anything different, this should match. And the build spec file just takes in a set of instruction and that you want to run within each phases. So we want to add the version since this is required. And now we want to tell code build the different phases to run and the command to run. So our first phase will be pre-build and we want to run the npm install and here we will install the list of packages in our package.json. The next phase will be our build fails and again we want to run commands so let's do npm run build. And to complete this, we will have a post build. And if you remember in our package at JSON, we, we perform the S3 sync and the cloud running validation. In this example, we will use a S3 copy. So let's do a AWS S3 copy. And we want to copy recursively so we can grab all the files. From the build folder to our S3 bucket and of course this should be match your S3 bucket name and we'll append a forward slash at the end just to put it in the root we also want to do a cloud front invalidation so we're going to create and this is almost identical to what we have in the package at JSON distribution ID and I'm just going to copy and paste my distribution ID. And in our package.json, we add the path. Since we are running this in a Linux command line, we want to escape this path. And this just makes sure this runs as slash star. And that should be it. So we want to perform a npm install. Let's just make sure we have all our commands um, correct and a npm build to package or build folder and then we want to copy recursively everything in our build folder to our s3 bucket once that's successful we want to perform a cloud front invalidation so let's add this to git i'll just add a comment and I'll push this to our main branch and this should trigger our pipeline again so if we open up code pipeline we should see in progress so if we open this up and this should be running again the source stage is usually relatively quick in this now this may should fail one more time right because we still haven't given the code machine the permissions to push to s3 
and the permission to create the invalidation. As we expected, our pipeline failed again. Let's take a look at the error message. So just click on view and code build. And if you scroll all the way down to where we're initiating that command, so we're running the AWS S3 copy and we're getting access denied. And that's just because the code build machine doesn't have the permission to push to this S3 bucket. So let's try to fix that. If you scroll all the way down to your build settings and scroll to environment and we want to look for a service role. So let's open it up. And if you look in the permission policy section, there is already a policy and this is a list of permissions specific to the Colbin machine and how it keeps the log. We're not going to touch that policy itself, but we're going to add a new one. So over to the right, it add permission and create inline policy. And there's a few ways to do this. We could write the JSON or copy and paste it. One easy way to do this is to select the service. So we want to search for S3. And I know we need, I know we need a write permission. So I'm going to collapse this right here and we need to be able to put objects in that bucket. The next step is to select the resource and here we can do a wildcard and point to all possible buckets so, but you'll see this message just a warning it's not best practice. We can get real granular and specify the the bucket name so click on add on and here we just need to copy and paste your bucket name. I already have my bucket name and for objects, we do need all objects. So this should be star. So your bucket name and this will create the iron. Once you have that in place, we're just going to click add. Another permission that we need is the ability to create CloudFront invalidation. So let's it add an additional permission. And the service should be CloudFront. So select CloudFront and again in the right section, we should see create invalidation. There it is. And we're going to follow the same steps we did earlier, right? We can either go with all resources or we can get very specific. So I'm going to hit add on and I just need to copy the distribution ID there. And I'm just going to paste this and click add. Now we just need to hit review policy and we're going to give this a name and I'm going to call this S3 CloudFront policy and it create policy and that should create a policy. So now we have the permission. We just need to run the pipeline. So if we go back to code pipeline select your pipeline and we're going to release change and that should initiate a pipeline all over again and now we have a successful build of course we haven't made any change to our site so it should be identical but now we should be able to make some change and automatically have our pipeline run so let's go back to our source code and i'm just going to clear this I'm just going to make one tiny change where I'll increment the code by three. Let me save this and I'll do a git push. Update source and let me do a push. Our main branch, we should trigger a new pipeline build. So we should see in progress and we're going to run this again. And our pipeline is successfully built. Now let's check our website. I'm going to refresh and this should be incrementing by three.